Hi there, and today I'm going to be talking about Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide. Right, first, we've got to start off with the basics. So, the basic principle of Dead Island is a first person role playing game. Your objective is to avoid death and leave the island of Banai. Banai is a fictional island off the coast of New Guinea. And what the whole purpose of Dead Island is, is a zombie survival game. Now on the island you'll be greeted by many different types of zombies, different types of survivors, you'll have different missions, objectives, and that's just for the first Dead Island. For Dead Island Riptide it's quite similar but there is different versions of missions, these different types of zombies, um, survivors. Right. So first, let's talk about the breakout. Now, basically, Dead Island is kind of based off a true story, but not exactly realistic. The virus is based off the Kuru virus that um, has swept across Benoit. It started off in like the highlands and in the jungle area. What Dead Island's trying to say is, imagine if the, the Kuru virus mutated. In the same sense, what if? the dead host could also be reanimated and brought back to life. This is kind of what Dead Island and Dead Island Ripside is trying to say. They're trying to put a statement out and they're trying to differentiate themselves from all of the zombie games. Let's just talk about death briefly and how simple it really is. Dead Island has a simple and really great death system. There is a money reduction from your current money. Now money is used for repairing weapons, upgrading weapons, putting modifications on weapons. So basically when you die you respawn close to your death. I also want to talk about weapons now. By that what I mean is that weapons are colour coded. So why it being a really common weapon, you know like a paddle, where say something that's orange could be like a really awesome Axe, an example in the game is Viking of the South, that's a really cool fire axe. I also mentioned firearms, now with firearms on Dead Island, you know, there's noise, it's going to attract enemies. In the same sense as well, it's a case of, you know, ammo's scarce, you know, they don't actually do that much damage, so you kind of pushed away from trying to use firearms, you're mainly going to be using melee weapons or say if you find a vehicle you could just run zombies over multiple times, you know, there's, there's a thousand and one ways to do it. But if you think of it this way, melee weapons, there's more range of them, like you can range from an actual example, I'll give you firearms first, you have like pistols, shotguns, machine guns, assault rifles, that type of stuff. I think you can get one sniper in the game but I'm not 100%, maybe two. Um, whereas melee, you, you have like clubs, maces, um, you have like sharps such as scythes, cleavers, knives, diving knives. You could have something simple as a baseball bat. When I think of Dead Island, one other main thing about it is I think of four survivors. That's just for the first Dead Island. Now, them four survivors. You know, they all have their own background, their own story, they all come from different places, different cultures, different ethnicities, you know. So they're pretty cool in themselves, but the one main thing is they are immune to this new epidemic. Now if we're talking about characters, we're going to say Zian Mei. She's a sharp specialist, so obviously I haven't explained right. These characters, they have special abilities, they have rage, which is where you could just plow through zombies like it's going out of style, etc, etc. So let's move on. We have Sam Bino. He's a well-known rapper. Um, he's performing at the resort in which it's set up, this big hotel. It's called the Royal Palms Resort, um, which is obviously where you wake up. Um, now he's a blunt object specialist. Now what that means is that if you want anything as small as a nail hammer up to a massive sledgehammer, he, he's your man, he's, he's a heavy hitter. Now we move on to Logan Carter. Um, he is a throwing weapon specialist. He's an experienced surfer, so you know he's good at swimming. Unfortunately, you can't really swim in the game, but you know you can jump in pools and stuff like that. So it's it's not really relevant, but it's still cool to know. Um, now Perna, 
she's a police officer from Sydney Police Department, but she's an ex-one. She's now a bodyguard for VIP. She don't really like her job, but she's awesome with firearms. Now, I'm going to talk about a Riptide-only character. He's called John Morgan. Well, John is a fist specialist. That means that, obviously, you know, he's going to be punching, using brass knuckles, stuff like that. He's also going to be using a variety of different weapons, such as, like, machetes, knives, um, guns. You know, he is military. I guess you could just go with a typical soldier, you know, up-close combat, and then, you know, just shooting them down from a distance. But... In Riptide, um, there is different weapons. There is claws, which is like knuckle dusters with sharp pieces of metal on the end of it. So, um, and finally, we have Ryder White. He plays a major part in the first Dead Island storyline. Um, you don't really realize who he is until the end. So I'm not going to spoil that. Now, mission like. Um, you basically have acts. There is on the first one, I think there's three acts, and there's goes up to chapter sixteen. No, there's four acts, and it goes to chapter sixteen. So that's a good variety of missions. You know, you're gonna play some cool missions. Um, Riptide, they don't do acts, but they do still have chapters. And if I just have a quick look. They do up to chapter 13, since it's launched in September 2011, um, Deet Silver announced the game has shipped 1 million copies in its first week, 3 million in 90 days. It's sold, like, throughout its time of being in existence, 5 million copies, and that's, that's actually from 2013, it could have doubled, tripled, I, I don't know. Um, but that, that's quite fantastic for the thing. I went out and I did kind of my own research, had some friends, I've played it with some friends online, some friends locally, um, and one of the main things that I got back from a few of my friends and a few people was that the environment was amazing. Upon researching, I found that a lot of people didn't particularly like the jungle. The only thing I'll say about the jungle is you, you realize from the jungle, you know, how the virus spread, what happened to the island. You know, it started in the jungle. It didn't start in the mainland, it started in the jungle and it spread outwards. So you see kind of deep silver zone interpretation of, you know, tribal life, cannibalism, some really dark subjects that maybe everyone may not or may want to talk about.